What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back for another Copart walk around. I know it's crazy. This is a crazy week, man. Copart walk arounds like crazy this week for you guys. I'm hoping that I can buy some new content for the channel, which is kind of why I'm doing extra Copart videos. Yeah, it's kind of filler, but I hope you enjoy it because it's not like it's, you know, you just come out here and stand around and do nothing. It's a lot of walking and it's wet out here. So unfortunately, I haven't won anything yet but I'm working on it. So I'm really, really hopeful that by the end of this week, we're gonna have some fresh content for the channel. We're gonna start right now with this. It's, it's a Saturn Ion. You guys remember this right here? This is a Saturn Ion, guys. Most of you probably don't remember this car, but, and I think, is this a red line? No, yes, 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 yes. I think this is a red line. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's supposed to have a little badge on it. Ah, there it is. There it is. Oh, man. I didn't know this was a red line. I knew it was an ion. I didn't know it was a red line. That changes things. That makes this a turbo. Now, I know you're looking at it and you're thinking, Randy, it's trashed. The quarter panel is destroyed. The suspension is destroyed. You're right and you're wrong, okay? The, one of the things that I really love about Saturns, all, the, I mean, all the way back, guys, back to the, the Saturn SL1s, the Saturn SL2s. Yeah, this is a red line for sure, for sure. Um, one of the things I really love about them is they're all plastic, plastic, plastic. All right, when you destroy a quarter panel on one of these, it's not the same as when you destroy a quarter panel on something like this, where it's metal and it's all got to be cut out and you got to weld. It's none of that. This stuff on bolts, this is just the skin. As you can see right here, see how it cracked up here? This is all just plastic skin and it all bolts together. As you can see, the, the structure is underneath and the structure looks good. What do you guys think? Yeah, the inner structure is fine. So all this needs is the quarter panel cover and some suspension components. Now I'm gonna have to get you guys under here. I probably won't be able to see what's going on, but you could tell me, is this a bent rear axle, I wonder? Or is it a, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so she's a solid rear axle and she's been bent, so it needs the whole rear end. Needs the whole rear end. Not a big deal. I mean, it's kind of a big deal, but really not that big a deal. I've done these before. It's got replaced shocks on the rear too. Excel shocks. Yeah, she's been tweaked pretty damn good. So I'm gonna say the, the fact that it's totaled is probably because Saturns just aren't worth anything these days. Uh, they haven't made them in a long time and you can't really get new parts like this for them. You gotta go, uh, you gotta go junkyard on most of this stuff. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna just forget about it because of that. It's fixable. I've dropped a rear on, a rear end on these. It's not that bad. It's really not. It's a very small, fairly lightweight rear axle. I had one of these, but it was a four door and it was not the red line. The doors will open up sideways also, as you can see right here. And you can see where the quarter panel bolts right there. All right, there's your bolts for the quarter panel. You take these off and the quarter panel just comes off of the car. It's got Recaro seats. All right, pretty nice. Remote keyless entry. Ugh. Oh man, the bolsters on these things are awesome. Look at these, look at these bolsters. Uh, of course, the red line, it's a stick shift. It looks like we have power. Let's, uh, I'm gonna scoot this seat up some. I like my seat scooted up. All right, and this, the center console is right here. The gauge cluster, I should say, is right here. I always thought that was really cool. It's out of your way. Uh-oh. Dead battery. Dead battery. All right, all right. It's got an aftermarket Bluetooth head unit. It's got aftermarket speakers as well. That dinging is really annoying, so let's, let's stop all that. Let's see what's going on under the hood here. If I can even get to it. Because this other car is really, really, really in the way. Ugh. Come on, man. I can't get to that. Guys, give me a minute. We'll come back to this. Did I say it was turbocharged? Oops, I meant supercharged. Yeah, yeah, look at that. 
the big supercharger sitting on top of there. All right. Let's walk around. Let's fire the old girl up. Let's see what she sounds like. Relatively low miles with 123,000 on the clock. Oh, she should fire up now. That does not sound healthy. It doesn't want to start. Come on. Something. Oh, something's going on here. She shouldn't be struggling like this. At 11 volts, it shows that it's on. Let me try to find a better ground. Oh, she's dead. My booster pack is very, very, very dead. Well, this will be the last car I get to jump start because it's 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 done. There we go. Ah. We just needed a better ground. That's all it was. We just needed a better ground. All right. She runs good. Ooh. I like this. I like this. The important window works. Uh, the dash has got some cracks on it. You know, to be expected from something that sits out in the Oklahoma heat. Check engine light came on pretty much immediately. Uh, brake light's on, but I'm sure that goes out as soon as we turn off the e-brake. All right, let's see how the clutch feels. Put it in gear here and... Yes, sir. Yeah, she's got a good clutch. Uh, it's got reverse lockout, so you got to pull up, back. Yeah. And let's put it in fifth. It's a five speed, not a six. Oh yeah, she'll stall the engine in fifth gear. Okay. Hey, air conditioning is cold by the way. Nice cold air. This is decent guys. Sound like bubbles. Decent. Yeah. Okay, guys, I like it. I do. I like it. She's going to need a little bit of work, but uh, I'm going to keep my eyes on this one for sure. I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on this one. It's got cruise control and everything, man. I wonder if the key fob works. It does. I wonder if it's got a system in it. Let's go check. Let's see if we can leave this door open here. Yeah, let's check. You never know. Somebody may have left their subs and everything back here. I doubt it. That never happens, but no, there were no subs. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on now. Hold on. Wait a minute. What do we got back here? We got a... Wow. They took the speakers, but they left this big amp. Look at all this. Hold on, guys. Oh, my goodness. We got another amp right there. Got an amp right here. What is this, a big capacitor right here? Yep. 1.5 farad capacitor. Nothing is lit up, so this has all been disconnected, but we got yet another amp sitting right there. Wow. That's kind of crazy that somebody left all of that in there and all they took was their speakers. That's wild. Shoot, this thing's already set up, guys. All you need is a set of subs for it, and you'll be good to go. She's running very well. Very well. Oh, my uh, my booster pack came undone. Make sure the alternator's charging up on her here. I already turned the booster pack off, so she's not, she's not on. She's putting out 14 volts, 14.4. So she's charging. All right, guys, I'm going to uh, the intercooler pump is uh, dry. There's nothing in it. It's empty. The intercooler pump probably isn't working anyway. And someone's used zip ties to hold the chart. Okay. Anyway, it's doable. This is doable. 
stay tuned guys because if i can get my hands on this you can bet i'm going to all right now normally there would be nothing interesting or entertaining about a ford focus right i think we can all agree on that but there is something very special about this ford focus it's exceptionally special to the point that this focus is five thousand dollars that's right five grand you don't believe me go ahead and look up the lot number for yourself is it all the dents in the back right here maybe that's what makes it worth five grand i don't know maybe it's the butterflies this is a one of one with the butterflies um maybe it's the bubbling and peeling tint i don't know how about the broken bumper? No? Huh. Well, then what is it about this Focus? Is it the, the dent in the body line here? Is it the crease above the door handle right there? Hail damage. Is it the fact that it has leather seats? Guys, there's got to be something that I'm missing. <laughs> with this car there has to be what is this is this a heater what what the heck is this i think that's a i think that's a heater of some sort oh somebody's got a comment below and tell me what this device yeah it's a heater it's a heater oh my goodness <laughs> you gotta be kidding me okay um, it definitely comes with a few sets of keys and fobs. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay. It's got 134,000 miles. I don't see any warning lights on. I can tell you this, this car ain't worth five grand. This car is not worth five grand. Th it, this car literally right now has a buy it now of $5,000. That's the minimum bid for this car is $5,000. I mean, it goes forwards. It goes backwards. Um... <laughs> um, I don't know. Important window? Important window works. Power locks. Uh, power mirrors. Power windows. But at the end of the day, it's a Ford Focus. I, I, I don't care what options this thing has. Uh, it's not worth five grand. Oh, maybe it's the yellow top coils. I, I, I don't know. Um, she's got some leaky injectors or leaking valve cover gasket is what it is. Yeah, it's got a leaky valve cover gasket for sure. I swear I hear a vacuum leak too. I definitely hear a vacuum leak. Uh, I, if you don't believe me, I'm going to give you the lot number right here, okay? There's, there's the stock number, the lot number. You feel free to jump on Copart's website or pull up the Copart app, and you type that in, 406665910. Ooh, 406665910. Yeah, uh, hey, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything. It's full of lots of dog hair and the seats are stained and there's stuff spilled all over it. Um, we got an American flag back there. I don't know. Maybe that's got something to, to do with it. I, I, I honestly, I have no idea why they want uh, so much money for this car. I don't. Let's see if we can pop the... No, we can't pop the trunk. Pop the trunk. No, the trunk does not pop. Huh. Okay. Normally there'd be a button in here somewhere. Maybe it's... No? Yeah, I'm I'm lost, guys. I don't see a, a popper. There it is. Ah, there we go. 
There we go. Maybe there's something super valuable back here that makes it worth $5,000. No, there's, there's not. Well, I gave it a shot. There is an American flag, though, so uh, definitely patriotic. I can respect that. But no, no, not, not $5,000, guys. I was thinking maybe it was a typo. Uh, steering's pretty stiff. Maybe it was a typo, and maybe it was a buy it now $500, but uh, it's still listed for $5,000. Dollars. So speaking of little bitty Ford Econo boxes, I had to stop and look at this one because a while back, a long, long time ago, I lost everything. I lost my wife, I lost my business, and I started over from scratch. And I ran into a sticky situation where I had purchased a vehicle with no title and I thought it was a great deal for me. I learned real quick that buying cars with no titles can be very sketchy and it can get you in a lot of trouble. After purchasing a Dodge Charger, uh, like I said, a long, long time ago and in another state, I ran into an issue after a few months of cruising around and enjoying my car. Uh, I ended up getting surrounded by police and had guns pointed at me and my brother Tim because the car had been reported stolen. Now, I didn't steal the car and the people I bought the from the car from didn't steal the car. But what it ended up happening is uh, the owner of the car couldn't afford it. She sold the car to some people who had agreed to make the payments on it and they turned around and flipped it to me and told me it was paid off. Um, they sold it to me for a relatively good deal. I had no title and I was like, eh, what's the big deal, man? I'll just drive it around till the tags expire. No big deal. Well, it was a big deal because inevitably she reported it stolen uh, when they quit making the payments. Now, the fact of the matter is what she did was illegal. You cannot report a car stolen if you sold it to somebody. Even if they refuse to pay for it, it is not stolen. Um, but that was beside the point. It didn't matter. All that mattered is that the police had a report for a stolen car and I was the one in it. Now, thankfully, at the end of the day, no charges were formally filed against me. I didn't go to jail or anything like that because I had documentation showing that I had been in possession of the car for several months and she had reported the car stolen just a couple days prior. The police obviously realized something was very wrong with her story. But at the end of the day, they still took the car and I lost it and it left me walking. Well, how does any of this pertain to this little car? Well, this is the car I got back into after I was done walking. I was on foot, my brother and I both had to walk everywhere until I saved up a few hundred dollars and I bought myself one of these. Now it was not a Mercury, this is a Mercury Tracer, I believe. Mine was a Ford Escort. It's the same car. It was the same color. It just didn't have this little light up bar in front. It was the, it was just a color keyed grill. So when I saw this with a buy it now 400 bucks, I was just kind of like, I, it kind of took me back. It took me back. Now this car is very dirty. Um, she's been very well used and I'm even hesitant to sit in this. This, this is just, there's liquid. There's liquid something down there. It's pretty gross. Dead as a doornail. Automatic transmission and it comes with a used belt. Ugh, I guess that's nice. 208,000 miles on the odometer. This thing is awful. Look, look at the steering wheel. <laughs> What happened to this? Oh my. <laughs> this is so gross. This is super gross, guys. Let's pop the hood on this. Uh, it's listed as a run and drive. I find that very difficult to believe, especially with 200,000 miles on it. But, oh wow. Okay. I am all too familiar with these engines, guys. They had they had pretty serious problems of dropping valves back in the day. And I can't tell you how many times I popped timing belts on these engines. And I'll tell you something, it's a very forgiving car. Even though I popped timing belts on multiple 
cars like this. Look how easy the timing belt is to change. It's everything is right here. You really don't have to take much apart to get to the timing belt and replace it. But as I said, these things were notorious for dropping valves and that generally caused damage, required taking the whole cylinder head off. But again, it's a small engine and it's relatively easy to work on. This one appears to have a problem because uh, we have a spark plug wire that's not attached um, to what I believe is cylinder number three, but it is listed as a run and drive. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back in there. All right. And I'm gonna put a booster pack on it. We're gonna see if my jumps pack has any juice left. We'll see if she runs. All right, it looks like we still have a little bit of juice in the booster pack. Oh, that did not sound healthy. Hey, it runs. And it's running on all four. It's running on all four cylinders. I think this is listed as mechanical damage because it was not running properly. But she's running now. Ugh. It's in reverse. I think somebody cut the cat. Yeah. Hey. She moves. Wow. I'm so tempted. What a, what a, what a clunker, man. This is, it, this car is so bad. It is so, so bad. Ugh. I don't know, can we, uh, I highly doubt the air conditioning works, but hey, let's give it a try, man. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, the air conditioning's ice cold. Wow, guys, we could almost save this one. It needs a lot. And nobody wants a Ford Escort or a Mercury Topaz anymore. It's almost bad enough to make it worth it. Yeah, there's nothing. Someone absolutely cut the catalytic converter down there. Okay, so what does it have going for it? Not much. Not much at all. But if you really wanted to, and you painted these black again, and you painted this black again, and you sent it to Mako, and you got a nice paint job to replace all of this, you detailed the engine bay, really detailed the engine bay, like heavily detailed the engine bay. You might, you might actually be able to do something with this. The body is really not that bad. The interior is pretty rough, but I think it'll clean up. Let's see if the, I think it's the door handle that's broken, yeah. Will it open from the inside, I wonder? Yes, it will. Okay. Ugh. That's good news. I think the interior would clean up pretty well. I don't know. I don't know, guys. You know, normally I'm really feeling it, and I'm like, yeah, we can do this, but on this one, I'm just, uh... Uh... Why? You know what I mean? Why? Why would we? Uh... Guys, comment below. You try to convince me. The seat belts work. The air conditioning works. Well, that's that's a lot of smoke. Hey, I could pull up next to people at a stoplight and be like, "You don't want no smoke. You don't want no smoke. I give you all the smoke because this thing's got a lot of smoke under the hood." I can literally tell people that. I got a lot of smoke under the hood. We've got a broken vacuum line here. Wow, that's, that's, golly. I don't know, guys. <laughs> uh, does it have power steering? It does have power steering. It has cold air conditioning. Uh, the wipers work. Signals? 
Signals work. It looks like the lights come on. Manual windows. Yep, that works. Oh boy. I'm gonna shut her off because that really is a lot of smoke. Uh oh. How do I get the how do I get the dang key out? Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know how to get the key out, so I guess I'm leaving it in. She's rough. She's real rough. Damn it, man. And 200,000 miles, there's a good possibility the transmission's not even any good in this. Another car that's absolutely not worth it. I'll leave it on the watch list. Buy it now, 400 bucks. Nobody's bought it now, probably because it was, I'm pretty sure this was listed as mechanical damage. And uh, plug that spark plug wire in and go figure, it comes right back to life. She's rough, but she runs. Next on my list, another Saturn. 97 Saturn SL2. If you bought an SL, the SL2 is what you wanted because it had the twin cam engine. That twin cam engine gave you a whopping, I don't know, 75 horsepower. I'm kidding. I'm sure it was more than 75, but it, it wasn't very impressive. But the SL2 was a fairly well-optioned car, and this one has the sunroof and everything as well. Big old sunroof right there. Lots of, uh... Oh... Yeah, yeah, that took a little bit harder hit than what I was thinking in the pictures. Yep, from the pictures, I didn't think it was really that bad, but it's real bad. Uh, there's the pillar right there. The pillar is twisted completely up, so this is done. Okay, I mean, that made quick work of it. I'll go ahead and take a look at it anyway, but I'm, I'm not interested in this anymore. It's been a long time since I've seen a Saturn SL running around, so I figured, hey... Here's an SL2. This was the one that you wanted if you were going to get a Saturn. And unfortunately, uh, that just took too hard of a hit over there. It did. From the pictures, it looked like maybe it was just the door skins. It's 100% the, the pillar is just junk on this, which that's enough to call this car done. 183,000 miles, so she had, some, she had some pretty serious miles on her. I'm not going to climb in here. It's wet. It's nasty. I am going to put the key in the ignition though and just see if by chance it might want to uh, uh it might want to fire up for us no nope that is a door now okay well that's fine that's fine i'm not gonna bother trying to put my booster pack up i am 99.7 percent sure that my booster pack is a hundred percent dead by now so i've got another story about these uh, oh they took the battery out of it that was shady. That was real shady. Why would you do that, man? Okay, hey, whatever. I guess if that's your thing. Okay, you needed the battery for something else. Um, oh, wow, and the fuel line is held together with zip ties. Oh, that's always what you want to see. That's always what you want to see. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's like these lime green zip ties. Those are holding the high-pressure fuel line onto the fuel rail. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a story about this. Okay, I bought one of these a long, long time ago in a Galaxy far, far away. And I did a motor swap in my garage. And it was no big deal. It's a fairly easy motor to swap out. Um, the motor had frozen outside and cracked. It's an aluminum block and it cracked and it was done. So I went and I grabbed another motor. And I thought, okay, no big deal. We'll put a motor in it. Well, it was a big deal because the motor that I took out of it was a twin cam motor. The motor that I put in it was a twin cam motor. Now, I noticed after getting the new motor in, I went to take it out for its first real drive. I had only driven it just up and down the driveway. I hadn't been out on the streets driving it yet. But I noticed when I put the new engine in that I got from Pull Apart, uh, for like $175, I, I quickly realized the transmission didn't shift properly. It was all over the place. The transmission was shifting gears like crazy. It was jerking and surging, and it felt like a horse trying to buck you off of it. And I did a ton of research, and I thought, man, the transmission's bad. Well, turns out, no, the transmission wasn't bad. I kept having codes for incorrect gear ratio. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can show you, because I may even remember 
let me tell you, this was a memorable experience for me. <laughs> Turns out, someone had had swapped the transmission in this car before the engine had cracked. And they put the wrong engine in it. Okay, these are 1.9 liters, but the only difference is this is a twin cam, and the SL1s came with a single cam. If you don't know the difference, or you don't know better, you would think it would make sense that they would have one transmission to work with both engines, but they don't. Both transmissions will fit up to either engine, but they will not shift properly. You've got to have the dual cam transmission attached to the dual cam engine. You cannot swap them. They are not backwards compatible. And somewhere under here, I'm going to try to show you. You won't be able to really see it, I don't think. But let me see if I can let me see if I can get you down here a little bit. Down under this uh, this air box right here where my finger is. There's a lip on the transmission right here that you probably can't see, but on that lip is gonna tell you what kind of transaxle this is. And you need to make damn sure that you've got the right transmission attached to the right engine in this car because let me tell you something, after replacing the motor and then finding out I had to drop the trans, you gotta drop the trans down out this way, you gotta loosen up the cradle, lower the cradle down a little bit, pop the transmission out from this side. I was pretty pissed, but I'm thankful that I found out that uh, before I changed the transmission that it had the wrong one in it. So I went right back to pull apart to the car that I had pulled the engine out of, and I just grabbed the transmission that was sitting there, and you know, it was like 50, 60, 75 dollars, something like that. Put the transmission in the car, she drove great. I sold it to my neighbor, my neighbor was a good friend of mine. He was a, uh, well, I don't want to say what he did, but uh, what he did for money wasn't exactly legal. I didn't live in the best of neighborhoods back then, but he was a good guy. He took care of his neighbors, I'll tell you that much. You know, regardless of what he chose to do for, uh, for income, he was a decent guy. And it, it was this color. Uh, sold it to him for pretty cheap just because he was a friend of mine. And he drove that thing for a long, long time to come. And now it's time to check out the motorcycles. I, I actually really like this one. I like this one a lot. She's clean. She's real clean. It took a little bit of damage up front, man. Uh, you can clearly see the fender is trashed. She, she's rough. She's real rough. But I think for the most part though, she's still all right. Uh, the alarm's going off. The alarm's mad at me. Ooh, looks like we got some damage over here to the shifter. Oh yeah, we we got a lot of damage to the shifter. It doesn't uh, doesn't shift at all. Let me bump it real quick. No, the clutch doesn't work either. Yeah, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Yeah, aren't you glad I didn't pull in the clutch and just go for it? I had a feeling. <laughs> I had a feeling. I did. I was like, I don't know about you. Yeah, the clutch is not engaging on this, so it's and the shifter won't shift out of gear either, so she's stuck in gear. Yeah, okay. What about this one? Here's another Harley. Ooh. Ooh. This is a 2020. I don't even see keys to this one. Oh, and it's being held up by a rock. The kickstand is broken. Yeah, this one, this one's rough. I want to stay away from this one. I don't even want to touch this one, mainly because it's being held up by a rock. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one alone. Here we got another Harley Davidson man. This is nice. This is real nice. It's got the 103. There's the windshield. Oh, those white walls. That's what I'm missing on my bike. Honest to God, that is what I'm missing on my bike, are those white walls. You can tell the ma man or woman ended up in a, in a little bit of mud. This is so nice. It's got the tachometer right here. I actually really like this. She's got 15,000 miles on her. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Let's go ahead and climb, climb aboard here. She's gonna get mad. These bikes always get pissed off, man. We uh, get this windshield out of the way here. I don't want to, don't want to end up on top of it. Oh, she's heavy. Yeah, she's a heavy bike. Woo. Yeah. Gee, I wonder why this looks so familiar. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
says she's in neutral. What do you think? I'm gonna push the clutch in and uh. Oh, that didn't sound good. Nope. That's a no-go. This one's uh this one's hurt. This one's hurt pretty bad. There's those highway lights right there. Turn the key on and got your highway lights. Obviously, she took a little bit of a bump. Cruise control, very nice. It's an older model. Still nice nonetheless. That engine sounded really bad though. Like that, that sounded real bad. We, we showed the KTM not too long ago. Uh, this is a 390. This is a nice one. Like I, I really, really like this bike and it's got this color display up here that is just absolutely gorgeous. It's, uh, someone left it on? No, it wasn't me, man, it wasn't me. Let's put the key in the ignition and see if she'll, she will. Look at that, ready to race. Look at that display. All right. Yeah, I like this one, but we showed this one before, so we don't need to do it again. It's got your, uh, your hand grips or your knuckle protectors, hand protectors, whatever. What else, so many Harley Davidsons. <laughs> Like, there are Harley Davidsons everywhere. And I was watching this guy on YouTube the other day, uh, and it turns out I don't like him at all. Um, it's called a Max Wrist, M A X W R I S T. Guys, guy's got like 860,000 subscribers, and he's on his little, you know, sports bike, whatever, one of these, you know. And he pulls up next to a Harley. It's an old guy with a big long beard on a Harley, kind of like this. And he's sitting at the like blup, 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 blup in his Harley. They sound good. They sound good. And the guy who's on something like this uh, starts making fun of him. Sitting right next to him at the stoplight, talking about he's old school. He's the last generation. Harley Davidson is dead. They're going to go out of business. They're going to be bankrupt and they suck. And Harleys don't have any horsepower. They're no good for anything. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, that's offensive. That's offensive. You're entitled to your opinion for sure. But to, to be talking trash about this older gentleman that's just sitting at a light mind in his business, that's just disrespectful. That tells me what kind of a person you are. And, and I know everything I need to know from that. That Max Risk guy, he's a, he's a loser. He's a loser. He's one of those people that thinks that only a sports bike is a bike. That's, you got to close mine, man. I can't, I can't relate to that. You know, you got to remember, I started out on a KTM 690 Duke, right? So I started out on a little lightweight sports bike, and, you know, it was fun. But, you know, truth of the matter is, it scared the living hell out of me. <laughs> it just did. It's too light, and it was too quick. And then I got on a Harley Davidson, and I like it a lot better. I like it a lot better, you know? Now I'm, I'm from a, a, a Duke 690, and I'm riding a 21 Road King. Big, heavy bike, and I love it. I love my Road King, I really do. But you will not see me ever sitting around talking trash about people that prefer to ride something like this. I love these bikes. And once I get to riding a little bit more, I'd probably really enjoy riding these a whole lot more. I just need a little more practice. And honestly, I really just wanted a bigger, more solid bike. These are light. Like, that's the thing, okay? A sports bike, even though they're not my style, and this isn't something I would be interested in riding, I can get on this and I can, you know, with my legs, I'm not holding this thing up with anything. Look, it's just my legs. I can lean this thing, no problem. You try doing that with my Harley, okay? My, <laughs> my Harley weighs over 800 pounds without me on it. Holding that bike up is a chore, but it's what I prefer. It's what I like. It's what I enjoy. So why would you, why would you come on YouTube and literally trash talk an old gentleman that did nothing to you that's just out enjoying his ride? Shouldn't we all respect each other? I respect people out here riding a sports bike. In fact, I got a lot of respect for you people, men and women, boys, girls out here riding these sports bikes. These things are rocket ships between your legs, man. A uh, lot of respect for you. I would never sit there and just trash talk you because you chose to, to ride a different bike than me. I just wouldn't do that. It's, 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 it's just wrong. It's wrong. It's And I can't believe someone with that many subscribers would come out and publicly say something like that. It's just horrible horrible so this bike was in a slight slight accident as you can see she's got some wires hanging out there's your shifter and everything down there it, it, this is a bizarre style of riding that for me i'm just not into you know uh 
I still I still like the bike though. I still like the bike. Just, you know, not for me. Not for me at all. I'll tell you what though. One thing I really do like about it though is how light it is. Like you can climb on this thing and it feels like it doesn't weigh anything. You know, here we got another Harley big beefy bike over here and i haven't learned all my bikes yet obviously I, I haven't really learned the difference between like a street glide and i think they got an electric glide i know the difference between a road king though because these have this giant bat wing and you've got your radio you got gps you've got all this stuff my bike doesn't have any of that and i actually preferred it that way at least right now i prefer it to be yeah she's a she's a heavy old girl now you guys try doing this one-handed while you're holding the camera. Um, I don't want all of this. Uh, for me, when I'm out riding my motorcycle, I'm out riding just to enjoy the ride. I don't need music. I don't need all the fancy stuff, man. I just, I just enjoy getting up and down the road, and that's really all there is to it for me. There's your gas cap. Um, I'm not seeing a key to this one. So look at this uh, air filter, man. This air intake, isn't that just mean? Yeah, I like it. No keys though, no keys. So I can't, uh, can't start this bad boy up. I like it though, I do. It acts, I actually fit on it really well. It almost seems like this thing's sitting kind of low to the ground. Oh, there's the keys right there, but they're attached down here. So again, I can't very well put the keys in there when they're down there. And you got your cup holder right here. I like that. I actually really like that. Very nice. Very nice. Someone really put some thought into this, man, when they were decking it out. Uh, little Honda CBR right here. Clean little bike. So tiny. So tiny and so damn fast. Like, these things just move. This is a CBR 600RR. I think that means really racing really racing that's that's my guess but if you look around like most of the bikes here are harley davidson's i don't know what that says <laughs> people on harley's crash more or does it say that there's just more harley davidson's rolling around than there are just about anything else okay here's a bike that's not a harley davidson right and i like it i like it i actually really like this this is very clean these are interesting saddlebags too. A, a little small, but I love the way they flow with the bike, man. Like these look really nice. You got your sissy bar and yeah, I like this a lot. I wonder if it'd come on. Would she come to life? No, she won't. Hold on. No, she's dead as a doornail and I don't have any juice. Here we got a, a Vulcan over here. Oh boy. Man, look at Look at this antenna. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Another another clean bike, man. Another clean bike. I'll look at anything. I'll look at anything. And hopefully you guys enjoy some of this content. I don't see any keys in this one either. Another Harley Davidson over here. She's uh, she's kind of beat up, man. She's beat up real bad. Another street glide. All right. Ooh. A Road King that's been... Uh, She's been pretty beat up, man. She's been pretty beat up. Had some speakers here, so they had themselves a little music. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> All right. I like that. That's that's funny. Man, you know, the, just when I see these bikes, I always got to say, because it, it just hits me, man. I hope, you know, everybody who's in accidents on these things came out of it all right, you know? Uh, I love looking at bikes. I love looking at wrecks. But when it's motorcycles, like, it just really gets me because I know from, from being on the road and riding now how little people care about bikes. And uh, I realize how vulnerable uh, people ride motorcycles really are. Like, you're on two wheels, man. You don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance up against a car, a truck, uh, God forbid, a semi. Um, hell, just falling off the road at 60 miles an hour could be enough to, you know, change your life forever if not end it. So I got a lot of respect for people riding motorcycles and I've made it a point to uh, give extra room to motorcyclists to keep my distance. I stay back. I let them do what they're doing, man. I don't, I don't get in their way. <sighs> okay, hold on. Wait a minute. Let me put my two cents in it. 
I'm not a trike guy. I, I'm, I'm really not. That's that's not my thing. I'll tell you what, it had to be a lot easier to, to ride one of these. I don't know, is it really riding though? I mean, are you riding on a trike or are you driving a trike? Because I think riding requires you to be on a bike. Riding requires two wheels because you've got to maintain balance. And let me tell you something, counter steering and leaning to turn and all this stuff, very important on two wheels, which is why they call it riding. You drive a car because the car does everything for you. This has two back wheels, so I, I feel like this is more something you drive than something you ride. You guys comment below and tell me what you think. She's dead as a doornail as well. Yeah, she's dead as a doornail. Ah, oh, wait, 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 no, she's not. No, she's not. All right. Hey, man. I, like I said, I'm not a I'm not a trike guy, but this isn't this isn't half bad. This isn't half bad at all. Never ridden one. I'll tell you something. I don't know how it is in your state, but here in Oklahoma, you can get your motorcycle license on one of these. You can actually take your test and get your motorcycle license on a trike. And to me, that's not right. And I do believe they're working on changing that law because. Just for example, you could get your license on a trike and then you could go out and ride a two-wheeler, you know, but you don't have a clue how to ride one. You have no clue how to ride a two-wheeler because all you've ridden on is a trike. That's dangerous to take somebody from three wheels and put them onto two that doesn't know what they're doing. So hopefully they do, uh, they do get that changed. We've got a big horn here. Look at that. Yeah, I've never even sat on a trike. It's a... Uh, well, that's different. It's different. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's like, it feels great, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, it feels great because you're not leaning. You don't tell, how do I look, guys? How do I look? Oops, that mirror's falling off. Hold on. Rum, rum. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. All right. I get it, I guess. Sort of. I don't hear fuel injection doing anything. This one may not run. It's in neutral. Let's go ahead and... Nah, she's dead. She's dead. The battery's dead. But yeah, it's nice, man. Look, you got all your little pouches to put your little paperwork and probably your billfold or whatever. And you got your, your radio and all the special gauges that you need and everything. Yes. Speakers, cruise control, accessories, lots of stuff over here. Volume, up and down, turn signals, cruise control. That's probably like your radio on and off. Volume, up and down, lights, flash, horn, uh, run, off, your electric start, set, resume. There's a lot. There's to, For me, there's too much going on up here. Too much going on up here for me, guys. Still, pretty clean looking bike, though trike whatever you want to call it. i like it i do i like it and with that guys i think we are done so do me a favor if you enjoyed the content this week hit that thumbs up button and let me know you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed don't forget you can follow me on facebook instagram tiktok auto auction rebuilds links for everything down below guys drop those comments tell me what you thought what cars did you enjoy the most what cars would you prefer to see on the channel if any what bikes did you like the best? What's your favorite type of bike? And I can promise you this, I don't care if you come on here and say your favorite bike is a Yamaha or a Honda or whatever, I'm not gonna come on here and trash talk you for your bike preference. I think that is just uh, someone with a short, a little bitty something trying to compensate by going fast on their little bike. Guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I appreciate y'all watching. Stay safe out there. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.